Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to talk about Star Wars The Force Awakens. Again. This time with spoilers. So if you do not want spoilers, boy howdy are you watching the wrong video. Stop watching right now. There's a link in the description to the non-spoiler video. Go watch that one. Stay the fuck away. This is your last warning. Five, four, three, two, one, one and a half, one and three quarters, zero. So Luke Skywalker is missing, Kylo Ren is actually Ben Solo, and Han Solo is dead. I did warn you. Yeah, wow. Uh, we'll get to that last bit in a moment, but uh, let's just start off at the top. Like I said in the non-spoiler vlog, very first line in the opening crawl, Luke Skywalker is missing. Not really a surprise. A lot of people, I think, had already predicted that Luke would be missing to start out the movie, and the movie would be about the search for Luke. Turns out that was exactly correct. What did surprise me is he did not show up until quite literally the last minute. The very, very end, just Luke was the cliffhanger, which took place on an actual cliff, oddly enough. No one was actually hanging off of it, but, but yeah, still, very last minute. Of course, by keeping Luke out of the story this time around, it allows them to put more focus on building up the new characters, Ray, Finn, and Poe Dameron, so... Honestly, this was probably the right call, because they are very strong characters with three very talented actors behind them, and I'm glad that they're actually people that we can look forward to seeing more of in Episode Eight. And yeah, if that ending was supposed to make me want to see Episode Eight, mission accomplished. I want to see it now. I know that's not possible. It hasn't been made yet, but... Good. I have to wait three years for that now. Damn it. And of course, we now know Kylo Ren is actually Ben Solo, the son of Han and Leia. Again, not unexpected. Uh, I had figured his last name would be either Solo or Skywalker, because that would allow Darth Vader to be his grandfather, and sure enough, that's what they did. I have no idea how he actually got Vader's helmet. I don't know if Han or Leia kept it as a souvenir at one point. No, that would be really weird. I don't think they would do that. Uh, maybe he just went back to Endor at some point. Maybe they'll talk about this in Episode Eight. We'll see. And now we know that at some point after Return of the Jedi, not only did they build a new Republic, but Luke tried to restart the Jedi Order, as you would expect. And apparently this went horribly, horribly wrong because Ben went crazy and killed everybody, and Luke considered this a massive failure and apparently took it very hard and decided the best thing for him to do was to exile himself. And then Ben became the wannabe Sith Lord Kylo Ren. Apparently that boy has just a little too much of his grandfather in him. We also now know Rey is apparently the new Jedi, which was a surprise, and that was... One thing the trailers did a very good job of hiding, I suspected that she might have some sort of force sensitivity. I didn't think they would outright put the lightsaber in her hands, because throughout the trailers, we always see Finn carrying the lightsaber, and turns out, he... well... I don't want to say he's not force sensitive, that may not actually be true. It's possible that he also has some sort of force-related powers, it's just perhaps not as pronounced as it is with Rey, but yeah, she is apparently the new one to carry the lightsaber. That was a surprise, a welcome one. And we also know what that big thing was in the corner of the poster. That is Starkiller Base, which is a new Death Star of sorts. Calling it a Death Star isn't really right. It's pretty much a Death Planet. Like they actually built the weapon inside of the planet and it gets its power by sucking up the energy from a star and then spits out that energy to destroy planets, and instead of just destroying one planet at a time, it can destroy, like, five. Where do they come up with this shit? <laughs> oh my god. That, I've heard of shooting stars, but this is ridiculous. I, wow. <laughs> That is amazing. 
I just, only in Star Wars could you see something like this, really, and still have it somehow make sense. Uh, but you know what? This is how you know you're doing suspension of disbelief correctly. If I can see something that ridiculous and still go along with it. Something a lot of filmmakers don't quite get. Suspension of disbelief is not entirely on the audience. It's partly on the audience, it has to be, but part of it is also on the filmmaker to give me a reason to suspend my disbelief. Which is exactly what this movie did. It's like, okay, big planet that sucks up stars and spits them back out at other planets, sure. Whatever, I'll go with it. Now we still have a lot of unanswered questions, like, for example, who the hell was Max von Sydow's character supposed to be at the beginning of the movie, and how did he come to acquire the last piece of the map to Luke Skywalker? Clearly he has some sort of connection to General Leia. I mean, he even mentioned, you know, to you she's a general, to me she's still royalty. So clearly he has some familiarity with that character's history, but... We don't know. I don't even know if they mentioned the character's name in the movie. If they did, I missed it. I do hope we get to see more of that character. Obviously, we can't see more of him in the present timeline, because he's kind of, you know, dead. But perhaps in a flashback, just... It'd be a shame to waste Max von Sydow in such a short scene. The guy is so talented. We still know very little about Rey. We did learn that she was apparently abandoned on Jakku at a very early age and has been living there a long-ass time, and that's about all we know so far. And she's apparently Force-sensitive as well, but yeah, beyond that, we still don't know who exactly her family is and why they left her there. It's possible she may have some connection either to the Skywalker family or the Solo family, it seemed to me the movie was kind of hinting at her being a solo, but that may be a swerve. I guess time will tell. And we find out in the movie that Maz Kanata, Han Solo's diminutive friend, is apparently in possession of Luke's lightsaber. No idea how she got that. They didn't even try to explain that one, really. Just, she's got the lightsaber and that's it. Although we did learn one thing from this character, now we know whose voice that was in the trailer saying, the force is calling to you, just let it in. It was apparently her. And speaking of lightsabers, I don't know if this is something they're actually going to focus on in the next two movies, but I would love to know how exactly Kylo made his. Because clearly he did not have the proper instruction manual, because that is as ghetto a lightsaber as you can possibly get. It looks cool, but... Clearly, this was not designed by a professional. That is an amateur-as-all-hell lightsaber. And there's got to be a story behind that, and it's a story I would like to hear. I don't know if they're going to ever get to that, but it's going to be fun finding out. And one more question that was not really answered very well was, how the hell did Poe Dameron survive that crash at the beginning of the film after Finn rescued him from the Star Destroyer? Because... They crash on the planet, Finn wakes up, and Poe is just nowhere to be found, and the TIE Fighter just falls into a sinkhole, and supposedly that's it. But then later on in the movie, he shows up with that squadron of X-Wings, and he's just fine. And they didn't really offer a very detailed explanation. He's just like, oh yeah, I made it out of the ship, I was fine. I would have liked a slightly more detailed explanation instead of just hand-waving it away, like some Jedi mind trick. Poe Dameron survived his crash. You don't care why. Go about your business. And speaking of Poe, I really liked the friendship that developed between him and Finn. That just worked so well. I love seeing those two interact on screen. It's just awesome work by both of those actors. And despite not being the official Jedi for this new series, Finn handled that lightsaber pretty well, especially in that fight against the Stormtrooper. That was really well done. I like that. Now, as far as Rey's story and what happens to her when she actually finds out that she's basically the new Chosen One, she's in Cantina 2.0, basically, she hears some weird voice calling to her from the basement. She goes into the basement, finds Luke Skywalker's lightsaber in a box. Don't know how it got there. Whatever. And then she has the mother of all flashbacks, which, according to an interview with J.J. Abrams, had little bits of the voices of Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda. 
Like, they actually recorded some new stuff from Ewan McGregor and Frank Oz for this, which I completely missed when I saw the movie, so the next time I see it, I'm gonna have to listen for that, because that's very interesting. And her first reaction is to run like hell. Though I don't know how exactly you're supposed to run away from the Force, because, you know, it's kind of everywhere. Surrounds us, penetrates us, binds the galaxy together, you know the drill. You can't really run away from something like that. And it takes her a while to accept that this is her destiny and this is what she's meant to be. And it's not really until she's captured by Kylo Ren and he tries to use his mind-manipulating powers to extract the information from her for the map to Luke Skywalker. In that moment, when he tries to access that part of her memory, and she probably just almost by instinct blocks him out, it seemed to me that that was the moment where she finally accepted that this is what she's meant to do. Because you can just see the fear slowly drain off of her face once she realizes just what exactly she's doing. And that scene just worked so well. I really liked that moment. And when she finally, as that tagline from the trailer says, when she finally let it in. And I already briefly touched upon this in the non-spoiler vlog, but that final shot with Rey holding out the lightsaber to Luke, just... Mmm. Beautifully done. So now, let's talk about... The Thing. Yeah, that thing. JJ, you bastard. Ugh. You know what's funny? Because in the moments leading up to that scene, when Han Solo and Kylo Ren are on that bridge, for a second I actually thought Kylo was going to ask Han to kill him, because he's talking about how much pain he's in, oh, my life is a living hell, yada yada yada, going all emo on him. And speaking of which, there is a Twitter account right now, it's called Emo Kylo Ren. If you look that up, it does have spoilers in there, but... If you're watching this, you don't care about spoilers, obviously. But yeah, it is very funny stuff. But anyway, while they're talking about that, and he says, I'm in so much pain, and slowly hands Han his lightsaber and begs him for help, I actually thought for a second that's where they were going to go. I'm kind of surprised they didn't. But then as Han reaches out, suddenly Kylo tightens his grip, and in that moment, I knew it was coming. Oh, that was so tragic. JJ, you bastard. I know it had to happen that way. There, there was really no other way that scene could have ended. There's no other way that this story between Han and Ben slash Kylo could have ended. He had to go. Doesn't mean I gotta be happy about it. But then again, you're not supposed to be happy about it, because we love this character and we don't want to see him go. And it sucks. I will say they handled that scene very well. There is a very brief moment where they cut back to Leia, just in case you thought they had forgotten that she is also strong with the Force, just like her brother. As soon as Han got stabbed through the chest, she knew. You know she knew. That look on her face said it all. And Han's very last moment where he reaches out and gently touches his son's face just before he plummets off that bridge was so well done. Although it does bring up one of those weird things about Star Wars. Like, still, they have not figured out guardrails. All of these years, they have figured out how to travel at light speed, and yet they cannot master basic workplace safety. How do we not have the galactic version of OSHA in this universe by now? Seriously, I'm not worried about the Resistance or the First Order. I'm worried about Workman's Comp at this point, because god damn. Now, one last thing to talk about before we go. There's apparently a group of people out there who are under the impression that Ray is a Mary Sue. And that is the question that has caused so much debate 
on the internet, is Ray a Mary Sue? I have seen this everywhere. I've seen it from people I know on Facebook. I've seen it from random jackasses who bug me at 1 a.m. on Twitter. That was fun. Seen it all over the place. So, is Ray a Mary Sue? Well, the short answer is no. No. Now, for the long answer, let's take a look at exactly what a Mary Sue is. As many of you probably know, the origin of Mary Sue came from a parody of a Star Trek fan fiction that was intended to make fun of really badly and lazily written self-insertion fantasies. Characters that are ridiculously overpowered and are way too talented at way too young an age and everything comes far too easily for them. They got no visible weaknesses. Sometimes they end up magicking their way out of trouble. They are loved by everyone in the story to the point where it just gets ridiculous. And everything in the story and indeed in the universe revolves around them. This is not Ray. At all. Bella Swan is a Mary Sue. Ray is not Bella Swan. Not even close. First of all, she's not the sole focus of the story. She's, on the hero side at least, pretty much splitting her time with Finn as far as who gets the most focus, so that's right out the window. And there's definitely no self-insertion fantasy going on here, unless you're trying to tell me that Ray is supposed to be either J.J. Abrams or Larry Kasdan. And if you are trying to tell me that, it's time to get back on the meds. And Ray does have very clear weaknesses. Perhaps she is physically very capable, but not all weaknesses are physical. They can be emotional as well, and emotionally, she is a mess which you would expect from someone who was abandoned on the planet of BFE at a very young age and has been wondering where her family is and why they left her and when they're coming back, if ever, and then suddenly gets yanked into an intergalactic war and, oh, by the way, you're a Jedi. And when she learns she's supposed to be the new Jedi, her first reaction is to run the fuck away. This is not a flawless character. Now, as far as everything coming to her far too easy, allow me to quote Han Solo from A New Hope. Easy? You call that easy? For crying out loud, she nearly crashed the Millennium Falcon the first time she tried to fly it, almost immediately after takeoff. And yeah, she figured it out pretty quick, but that's not uncommon for someone who is strong with the Force. They tend to be very good pilots. Keep in mind, Anakin! was an expert pilot on his first attempt at flying a starfighter, and he was freaking nine! This is not a new thing in this universe. And yes, towards the end, she does magic her way out of trouble, but again, that's how the Force works. That's what Jedi do. You got to adjust your parameters for the universe you're looking at. If magic is a normal thing, then magicking your way out of trouble is not a Mary Sue indicator at all. If it was, then Obi-Wan and Luke and Yoda and every Jedi that came before them would also fit that category. Another complaint I've seen is that she learned how to use these force powers with absolutely no training. No training, huh? No, 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 no. She had training from Kylo. He probably didn't realize he was doing it at the time, but he was. Because think about it, every time Rey uses her powers, it happens almost immediately after Kylo does something to her, and she looks at what he's doing and copies it. He was teaching her the whole time, didn't even know it. She learns how to influence minds after watching Kylo poke around in her own. She learns how to use a lightsaber after watching Kylo fight Finn. And if you look at her fighting style when she picks up the lightsaber and starts going after Kylo, that really should have been a dead giveaway, because she is doing a whole lot of this. A lot of aggressive stabbing motions. 
that's not how a Jedi fights. That is straight up Sith right there. And who did she have to learn from? The wannabe Sith Lord himself, Kylo Ren. I learned it by watching you! And if you thought she took out Kylo Ren way too easily, keep in mind he was not at 100% in that fight. The dude had just been shot in the gut by Chewie's bowcaster. Something that would have killed a lesser man, and in fact did kill several lesser men during the movie. Not just killed, but brutally so. They made a big point out of that leading up to that fight. And had Kylo been at full strength, that fight probably would have gone quite differently. And we'll probably see that fight before too long, and I am looking forward to it. And it's not like there aren't legitimate issues with this character. Hell, I can name one. The fact that she apparently thought Luke Skywalker was a myth. I'm sorry, I got a lot of trouble buying that. I know you can kind of explain, well... She was abandoned at a young age on some remote planet and all this and all that, but still, even on a remote world like that, it's apparently not that remote, first of all, because they got the remains of a huge battle between the Empire and the Resistance all around them. You know, they are surrounded by this history, quite literally. So for that all to just vanish in such a short time... Uh... Maybe, but I have a hard time swallowing that. But yeah, there are some issues with the writing of this character. But she ain't a Mary Sue. Not at all. This isn't even a gray area. She's just not. But by all means, feel free to post your comments telling me I'm wrong. Because I know you will. And I think I've said about all I need to say and more about this movie now. Well, this was a fun time. I really, really like this one. I am looking forward to episode 8. It's just a shame we gotta wait so long for it, but them's the breaks. So, till next time, may the Force be with you.